This is your Estuary Report. I'm Jerry Kay. Baxter Creek at Booker T. Anderson Jr. Park in Richmond was designed and built in 2001. The site is at the downstream end of the watershed near the bay. On today's report, we visit a soil bioengineering demonstration led by Mike Vukman, field project manager for the Urban Creeks Council. Soil bioengineering, which has been around for thousands of years, Romans and Chinese empires used to use it, it's really using a flexible engineering technique using plant and soil materials to provide stabilization for our stream banks. Some people often refer to soil bioengineering as just bioengineering, which gets confusing because then you can, you can line up with a lot of the corporations doing the medical research. So it's kind of needed to say soil bioengineering. What are the benefits of soil bioengineering? One, we're going to minimize erosion rates, which minimizes sediment moving downstream that sediment then becomes a form of pollution. It'll take up the habitat for the various macroinvertebrate bugs, caddisflies, stoneflies, mayflies. That's in a very healthy system. It might, they, the sediment then might also block the anadromous fish populations that don't really exist so much here anymore, but still have remnant populations. They need certain size gravel to spawn, to kick out, to make their reds, lay their eggs. This fine sediment, this clay-based soil, will decrease their ability to find those sediment, those gravel beds, and hence they won't be able to lay eggs and they will continue to disappear. That's one major reason. Two, protect property value, increase property value. Three, it adds a lot, tremendous amount of habitat for the other local flora and fauna. I asked Mike to describe today's soil bioengineering project at Baxter Creek. We've installed an erosion control blanket, and that was the first phase made out of recycled coconut husk. We are installing willow and dogwood posts or cut-ins. We are installing willow brush vertically along the bank, matching the contour. And then we're anchoring the toe of that brush mattress with a what we call a willow wattle. But I'm actually mixing in dogwood, willow, and cottonwood. Once that is done, I'm securing it with um, some concrete forming metal stakes with wire. We're then going to hammer that, the stakes in and that wire and it creates an interlocking grid that sinks into the bank and then we're going to gently sprinkle the dirt that I removed already as I graded it slightly the other day on top. So at the very least, I'm pretty sure that that bottom wattle is going to grow because it's in the water. I'm also pretty certain the willow brush will grow because it has its basal ends in the water. If it doesn't, I know that it's at least roughness. It's going to deflect flows or absorb flows and actually may actually induce the stream to deposit that excess sediment and temporarily store it there. And maybe other plant species could come in and colonize. And then I also hope that those willow posts will grow. But at the very least, I'm kind of creating a small shield for a while. But there's a lot of built-in redundant attempts that any of them could work or all of them could work. What are the actual steps for creating a successful soil bioengineering project? One, identify you have a need and then look for a solution. There's a few manuals you can refer to. The NRCS, Natural Resource Conservation Service, has a really good manual called the Practical Stream Bank Bioengineering Guide. You can download it online. Pretty big size, but you can download it. Begin to peruse through and look at a technique that you think would be applicable given your site conditions. Once you did your research, you have to identify where you can get your materials, your willow typically, or dogwood. You either find a local public entity, a local Berkeley or a city or a county, and you could squeak the wheel by asking them, hey, I need some willow for an erosion control project. I'd like to do you a favor and reduce your maintenance time somewhere. And then you may have to go through a small permit process. So identify a source for that material or purchase it. Identify the materials needed do you need erosion control blankets? Um, what other plant species might you add? And you've already figured out the technique and then it's simply a matter of deploying it. With a caveat, you may need a proper permit from your local town or city, the Regional Water Quality Control Board, state, California Department of Fish and Game, and sometimes you may need a permit from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, especially in and around a larger water body stream 
or an area known to have a threatened or endangered species. So you would be remiss if you did not look the permit process up first to see if it's even worth your dollars to invest in once you've gone through that or hire someone to do that for you. If you do live along a creek and you have property, you absolutely have, you have a lot of responsibility along that creek. You may or may not know that you have up to four different agencies that may have jurisdiction. Soil bioengineering is what they're going to want to see you deploy in order for you to protect your, your right to maintain the stability of your property. And so that this technique is fairly easy to use and fairly inexpensive, and yet it's what the regulators want. You don't necessarily have to pay a lot of money to try to get a design of a rock wall or a concrete wall that's going to be very expensive, difficult to permit, and have a negative impact on the overall local environment. Soil bioengineering gives you a cheaper solution that might have a more long-term, long-term stable solution. So cheaper, long-term, that's cost-effective to me. And you're going to add habitat value in the process.